In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome into our home tonight. I'm really glad you're here. Let us begin our devotion. I will do for you all you ask. Although it is true that I am a guardian redeemer of our family, there is another who is more closely related than I. If he wants to do his duty as your guardian redeemer, good. Let him redeem you. But if he is not willing, I will do it. Ruth chapter 3. The Disneyland ride, It's a Small World, is a glorious celebration of the variety of the world's languages, dress, architecture, dance, and customs. If we somehow landed in a nation not our own, we might share, as the ride's song suggests, laughter, tears, hope, and fears, but we'd need certain aspects of the culture explained. We'd also need an explanation of Bethlehem's in Bethlehem in Ruth's day. What, for instance, is a guardian redeemer? It was Boaz being willing to come alongside of Naomi and Ruth to redeem their difficult situation, but by law he first had to confirm that the closest relative did not want this role. Naomi understood this cultural practice as, as she and knew a Boaz fine character. She was seeing God at work. Well, I just want to say this. One time I was at Disney World and we were riding It's a Small World, the, the ride, and you know they sing It's a Small World after all. You know, I'm telling you, it may be a cute ride, but when you get stuck on that ride and for an hour and a half, all you have going through your head is it's a small world after all, you really would like to jump into the water and pull out all your hair and scream. That's what I felt like. But anyways, oh my gosh, I still have nightmares about that, those little animatronic things singing that song. Oh well, Redeemer. Someone who buys back. Someone who restores. In the Old Testament times, there was always redeemers. Um, I know that my redeemer lives, says Job. The idea of somebody who would come and rescue a family, buy them back, take them out of poverty, um, take them into their own, take them out of something disastrous. Uh, very often, if a family member was murdered, a redeemer would come in to carry out the justice and to buy the family's uh, dignity back from the murder. So yeah, um, this redemption was going on, buying them back, taking care of them, and upholding the family. The concept of Redeemer is amazing, right? Because that's what God is in Jesus for us. He's our Redeemer. You know, if you go to a store and you redeem a coupon, you hand them the piece of paper, the coupon, let's say it's a 50 cent coupon, and they, in essence, give you 50 cents back. They buy that piece of paper from you. We, in our lives, as, as, as sinful people, we were bought by Satan. We were owned by Satan because of the fall of mankind. We were trapped and bought by sin, death, and the devil. That was our owner. That was our master, sin, death, and the devil. That was our master. And there was nothing we could do to redeem ourselves, nothing to save ourselves, until Jesus, our Redeemer, came into the world and with his blood died on the cross, shedding it, buying us back from sin, death, and the devil. He bought us back, and now Jesus owns us. He is our master by the power of his redemption. He has bought us back from sin, death, and the devil, not with precious gold or silver, but with his holy, precious, innocent, suffering, death, his blood, so that we might be his own and worship him and serve him in his kingdom. We have been redeemed. Sin, our sin, our fall, our sin led us into slavery to Satan, and we were destined for eternal death. But thanks be to God who redeemed us from that death. On a side note, I want to talk to you about death. Um, and this is the concept of redemption, and I want us to understand this. So many people will say things when somebody dies like, Oh, God needed them, or it was his time to go and God took him. God does not cause death. Please understand this. God hates death. He doesn't want anybody to die. Death is a result of sin, and death, the only person that, and de the power of death has been given to Satan. He is the one that causes death. It's his final blow to you and to me, where he tries to grasp us, but he can't. That's where Jesus steps in. God is in the redeeming business, not the killing business. God is in the redeeming business, not the death business. God is in the redeeming life business. And when Satan strikes us with death at the final blow, Jesus stands up to him and says, You lose, Satan. I win. I've redeemed my people from sin, death, and the devil. I have bought them back. And though they will pass through the grave, they will live with me forever in heaven. They are now mine. God is a God of redemption. Please don't take that from us. We need that redemption. We only live by that redemption. Celebrate that redemption. For he is your master and he owns you. Bought with the precious blood of Jesus, you are forgiven, loved, and saved for eternity. In his name, amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you desire not the death of a sinner, but that all would repent and live. 
Hear our prayers for the outside, for those outside of the church. Take away their iniquity and turn them from their false gods to you, the living and true God. Gather them into your holy church through the glory of your holy name. Almighty, everlasting God, through your Son, Jesus, our blessed Lord, you commanded us to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us, and to pray for those who persecute us. Therefore, we earnestly implore you that by your gracious working, our enemies may be led to true repentance, may have the same love toward us that we have toward them, and may be of one accord and of one mind and heart with us in the whole of your church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining us tonight. I love you and God bless you. Bye-bye.